guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of With The Boys Podcast. Come and hang out with the boys. Today I have my friend, Rick Vasa, owner on John Padilla's uh, Plumbing. How you doing, man? I'm good. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, no, we, we weren't planning to have the podcast before, but we had to reschedule. I know you're a busy man. Likewise. Yeah. You know, running a business is not an easy right. task, but uh, we're here. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, man. So I like to start the podcast with an icebreaker. So I'm, I'm going to do a would you rather questions and, and just like see see where you take us. All right. All right. All right. So this, I just I just literally Googled these things. <laughs> and so I, hopefully I don't find anything too weird. But <laughs> let's go. So uh, would you rather always have a mullet haircut or a ponytail haircut? The mullet. The mullet. Yeah. yeah. Why? What's the, uh, what's the expression? Business in the front, party in the back. Just, just yeah, yeah, more my speed than a ponytail. <laughs> yeah, well, you, have you had a ponytail before? No, I've nah. always I have just like awful hair. So awful hair, keep yeah. Let's give it short. <laughs> and, it short. Yeah. yeah, all right. You might look good with the ponytail, or long hair. Might, yeah, you know, it's you something know. I'll never experience. You never. <laughs> I don't think I have to try that one. Yeah, uh, I will definitely uh, choose the mullet too. I don't. I don't think I would look good <laughs> with a ponytail. Um, all right, so would you that would you rather always have uh, bad gas or always have really dry mouth? Oh, probably the dry mouth. I guess it only <laughs> impacts you with the gas, like, <laughs> right? People aren't gonna be. We were just like a little like dry and yeah, and There's stuff you can. Well, do. They might say like yeah. I drink a lot of water anyway, so you can yeah, make it do, make it yeah. Gas so the, the gas is yeah, <laughs> it's gonna it's a little harder, harder problem to solve. <laughs> Mind you had that problem right now in a close environment. I was like, oof. Well, guys, thank you for joining the podcast. I think we're done. Yeah, we lost everyone. Uh, yeah, five minutes long podcast. All right. Uh, so um, would you rather be a high school teacher or a clown? It's tough. I have a family of teachers on my wife's side. So oh, yeah? I think the teacher, you know, they make it. You know, there's some perks. You know, you yeah. get summers off. There's some good there's so? some pros about it. I don't know if I can handle kids all the time. but Yeah, dude. I, I or that know. many kids, I should say. Yeah, I think I, I think I'll be a clown. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be a clown. I don't know if I. Yeah, I don't. High school is yeah, it's not a nice it's environment. <laughs> it's it's they do younger kids, in fairness. So yeah, it's probably a little easier with the elementary school age. Yeah, yeah. High school is tough, man. I, teachers. Yeah. We weren't the nicest to our teachers. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we were like, yeah, yeah. I don't want payback, you know, <laughs> for when I was a student. Uh, okay, cool, man. So. Uh, all right. So, would you rather be forced to dance all day, every day, until you get a perfect score on a dancing or, or dancing with the stars, stars, uh, or be forced to eat mashed potatoes until you get a perfect score on beat the chefs? So, would you rather well, dance a lot until you get yeah. a, a good score, or eat a lot of mashed potatoes until you get like? Good score on a chef. I think I'd be dancing to eternity because I'm the worst dancer ever. Yeah. So I don't think that would work regardless <laughs> of the timeline. Uh, so I think by default, by it's going to be mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I seem, I, that's not fair. I'm pretty terrible. You're pretty terrible at dancing? Yeah. You you married? Yeah, right. thankfully. Thankfully, I, 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 my wife has a lot of talents. Dancing also is okay. one of them. So collectively, we're <laughs> so pretty she, bad. So she, she compensates <laughs> for you. Yeah. All right. But but did you at uh, least uh, you married right like you went to like you had the the, the wedding and stuff yeah on the dance how, how do you how I do mean you? we we were moving uh, <laughs> at, at the time I think we felt pretty good you know we had a couple a couple drinks but uh, looking back at the video it's it's like a horror show oh like, yeah well, we, we like, oh we god no fast yeah. forward that yeah. and she's like oh no that's my favorite part <laughs> no, she, no she's right there with me she's oh like, yeah like, oh she yeah. yeah. she feels sorry yeah. <laughs> but no we had fun. yeah we had fun too. oh that's cool man that's funny that's hilarious. Oh, all right, man. So let's let's have the last one. All right, um, would you rather have a time machine or teleport? Be able to teleport, like from here to I don't know Boston. You're from Boston, so I mean, I think the, the time machine probably because you get you're like tele you can teleport in that too. Although I don't know, like I don't. That's a hard, well, if you that's use a, a time question. machine, if you use it here, you will be like, I don't know, like ten years. Yeah. In time, but here. Oh, okay. So you know, I don't get to go like ten years I, back. I, I, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. I, teleporting that's a, that's a hard. That's a hard one. Teleporting though is like you just wake up late for something. And you're yeah. like, oh, and you just yeah. <laughs> time machine to go back. You you know buy some better investments. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> True. Buy, buy Bitcoin with a penny. You know, yeah, or, or bet on some like yeah, sports. You yeah. know, like yeah. 
Teleport would be pretty sweet. I don't know. They'd both be cool. I don't think you go really wrong with either of those. Yeah, options. true. Lean what, toward the time machine. What would be the benefit? Like the biggest benefit of teleporting, though. Uh, not just being wherever you want at any time would be pretty yeah, sweet. Pretty sweet, right? Pretty cool. Save a lot of money. Uh, for me, uh, you know, family would be pretty happy about it. They're all back in Boston, so yeah, easy to go back a like bit. easy, right? Yeah, yeah I think I, I might choose the 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 um, the time machine too. I mean, at that point, you can go back, and then you have a private jet you know based on the nice investments exactly. that you made so it's kind of the <laughs> same thing right yeah yeah <laughs> i'll be a millionaire billionaire by yeah. now like like i will go back in time and and invent facebook or something <laughs> there's those movies that have that right it's yeah like, exactly so uh um cool man so that's funny so if we will go back in time what will be a good investment like what will be the investment for you god i don't um I mean, there's ones that are, like, uh, funny and obvious in hindsight because um, actually funny, the one that we always laugh about, my cousin is from Colorado. So when uh, Chipotle first came out, he was, like, raving about it nonstop. And he actually took me to visit. And um, I, I have no idea what the, the stock has done then, but we always used to joke about it because it was like if we had spent the money that we put on the burritos on <laughs> stocks, you know, we would have actually made money. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those things that were like, obviously, at the time, you don't have money. Right? Yeah. I don't have like $100 to spend. So like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's those ones where you can kind of go back and pinch yourself. Funny enough, with the uh, the reason I brought up the Bitcoin, I remember there was that Silk Road thing mm -hmm. came out, mm -hmm. and there was like a really well done article that kind of explained Silk Road and everything, and Bitcoin was talked about and how that was all facilitated, and I w I remember thinking that it was such a fascinating thing, but I didn't know what Bitcoin was or anything like that. Yeah. But that would be an example where like it, the opportunity was actually in front of you, you didn't know about it, and you're like, oh well, benefit of hindsight. Yeah. Same thing back then. I don't know how much money, I, you know, realistically you're going to put into something like that. But there are people who did it. So. Yeah, true. So you you know investment, right? Because you, you were. Uh, yeah, and that was my prior life, so to speak. Finances. Tell me more about that. Um, well, previous to uh, plumbing is what I'm doing now. Um, I worked re really right out of uh, college. So I went to Providence College in Rhode Island. And um, I was fortunate to get a good internship with, I'm from Boston, so Fidelity Investments is a big company out there. Uh -huh. um, really great company. I was lucky to intern with them and then started working with them right out of school. And then, um, you know, got very interested in it. I, I enjoyed it. Thankfully, I was pretty good at it. And I, I um, you know, worked hard to get promoted and kind of advance pretty quickly. And then um, I left Fidelity, went to some, uh, to do a uh, bit, well, SunTrust Bank, which is now Truist, they've merged with another company, but ended up doing investment management for them. Um, and after a few promotions, I realized I wanted to do it myself. So yeah. then I, when we moved out to San Diego, I launched my own company um, back in 2018. And, um, you know, just like financial advisor type of work. So it helped clients with like their retirement planning or investment planning. And then most of the time I would end up managing the money for them. So, you know, de developing the strategy and then where we we're going to put the money um, what type of investment vehicles, things like that. So funny enough, around that time, Bitcoin was getting very popular. So I yeah. constantly have people asking me about it. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, those are hard questions to answer because it was, it was a very, you know, it's that like yeah. the buzzy thing, which yeah. usually, you know, at, the, at when it's buzzy like that, it's not the most attractive, you know, investment class um so anyways that some of that came up but um yeah I, I i liked it i'm very grateful that i got that exposure like those are lifelong lessons you know it's obviously always good to know how to handle your finances yeah, so like 100%. those are skills that i'm never not going to be up at, you know upset that i have um but you know ultimately it was like not really what i felt like was fulfilling for me so um through a lot of that uh process i was doing business consulting and helping owners like understand their finances and that was really what kind of kept wanting me to get on the other side of the table, so to yeah. speak. And then um, ultimately, I think like a lot of us, when COVID happened, that was kind of like my time to look at like, hey, is this really what I'm, I'm yeah. wanting to be doing? And um, that was when I, I ended up making the change. You're making the change to plumbing. Yeah, yeah that was uh, – so I have several questions with all the things that you said. <laughs> all right, so let, let's – The natural go. path to plumbing, of course. Yeah, natural path to plumbing. Yeah. yeah. They're like, how, how do you – went to plumbing. <laughs> um Okay, but let's start with with Boston. You're from Boston, yep. so um, I, I'm from I'm from Mexico, right? So I moved here when I was like uh, 17 years old. You know, I grew up in California and all that. But I'm always had this like Boston this this picture of you know Irish like yeah. Some I you know I watched that movie how's it called with Ben Affleck. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, so so tell tell me more about Boston. So you were born there. You went. 
Yeah, um, all those born things, yeah. Uh, so the town just south of Boston is called Milton. Um, you know, I, I love Massachusetts and Boston in particular. Like, it's awesome to go back and visit. Yeah, I uh, definitely miss you know seeing my family all the time and all, uh, still have a lot of friends out there. Um, unfortunately, I don't stay in touch with as much <laughs> as I would like, just with all the things going on and yeah, in a busy day. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's uh, one of those places where it's. Uh, it's funny enough, uh, when I moved out here, San Diego, people kind of described it similarly. So it's like a big city, but definitely has like a small town feel. So uh -huh. you end up knowing everybody pretty quickly. Um, pros and cons to that, you know, it's, I, I think for me, it was like one of those things after graduating, really wanting to kind of experience something else. Yeah. Um, thought it was going to be like a short term thing. <laughs> so um you know, my wife uh, was, uh, we were just dating at the time, but she was going to NYU for graduate school. And uh, we just, I decided to move to New York to try that. It was really uh -huh. cool. Yeah. Um, so then trial became like, okay, now let's go try Washington, <laughs> D.C., which is where we live for a little bit. Um, that was cool. Uh, then we moved out here. And um, it, was, it was kind of interesting because my mom is from Simi Valley, which is just outside of the L.A. area. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, she was all upset when we moved out here. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we're going to be back. It's no big deal, you know. And she's like, no, you're not. Like, you're not. And, uh, yeah, I, this is going to be where we end up, you know, planting Same. the flag. Yeah, so. And why San Diego? What made you choose San Diego? Um, so actually my, so both my aunt and uncle, um, they're handicapped. So the Boston winters were really hard for them. Okay. So they moved out here, God, like at this point, maybe 25 years, like I don't know, 20, 25 years ago, something like that. Yeah. And it was so funny because we all thought they were crazy. Um, they literally bought a place in Bankers Hill, uh, sight unseen, like they had ne never, to my understanding, I could be kind of butchering the story a little bit, yeah, but my yeah. they'd never even been out here. Wow. They buy a place and literally just cross country over. Wow. And we th thought they were nuts when they did <laughs> And um, And they just kept talking about it and loving it. And uh, my wife, well, again, we were dating at the time, but my now wife, uh, we visited them in like 2012. And it was like a running joke where we were always like, oh, we should go to San Diego, go to San Diego. Yeah. And then um, when I decided I was going to launch my own firm, um, I, I knew I was going to start it from scratch because I, I had only been with SunTrust shortly. I w so I, there was no way I was going to be taking clients from them. It was uh -huh. just, uh, one, I don't even think clients would have come with me if I wanted to. I was, I was fairly new in the role relative. Like I, I it was kind of a, I got this huge promotion kind of like puts your life in perspective of like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty good at this. Like I'm going to go do my own thing before I get too far along in yeah. the golden handcuffs. Um, so I don't think anyone would have come with me even if I wanted to, to be <laughs> honest with myself. Yeah. And then fidelity, my brother was still working there so even like i had some good relationships maybe some people would have come up with me then but i wasn't going to ruffle those feathers so i was yeah. like all right look we're doing this from scratch like i'm literally going to start from zero we can do this anywhere in that at that point um so san diego we were like honestly it was like we backed into it like let's try it worst case scenario we don't like it we move yeah um and then we so when we came out here we were very fortunate you know have had some good friends um, that surprisingly like kind of came out here around the similar time um, so it was just, it was just like, it checked all the right boxes. And then obviously from lifestyle standpoint, like, you know, we were very active people. So we yeah. like to do that. Um, having some family here was, was really helpful. I don't see my aunt and uncle nearly as much as I would like, <laughs> going back to just busy stuff, but yeah. I mean, it is nice. Like when we get together with them, it's always yeah, really great. They're close. Um, and obviously, you know, people don't need too many excuses to come visit San Diego. So yeah, it's, exactly. It's, cool it's a nice that. city to yeah. visit. Oh, that's cool. So, um, so you decided to move here. Start your business here. So how long did you uh, did you get here and like right away started doing the business or what was that process? Yeah, uh, so that that was all part of the the plan. You know, of moving here was was starting. Um, it is a process though, so it's uh, you know you have to register with the state and go through some legal requirements. Like, I mean, it was it, it, financially it was on it on it just transparently not the most successful venture because I mean I, I left a very high paying position yeah. right, so yeah. it was a big financial sacrifice, but. The stuff that I learned, I mean, I, I still look back and I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, and there's definitely some cringy, th like, I'm like, God, I was doing weird social media. <laughs> but, like, you know, you just you try everything. And yeah. you, you just got to make it work, right? <laughs> um, but you, I learned so much, like, how to build a website, how to start, you know, even registering a business, like, yeah. all of these things. Um, so, you know, that I think we moved out here, I want to say, in May, maybe March or May, I don't know, whatever, uh, springtime of, of that uh, 2018. Yeah. And I think it took, like, four or five months to get the company, like, officially registered with the state yeah. and launched and everything. Um, so, I mean, honestly, that period, 
my wife, you know, <laughs> I just, I still don't know how she did all this, but you know, basically I go from, Hey, I got this huge promotion to, yeah. all right, I'm getting rid of my income. You're going to support <laughs> both of us. And we're moving across the country. Yeah. To stay. yeah. For, wow. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah, I mean, I was doing like Lyft driving, you know, uh-huh. Uber, you know, stuff that like, frankly, you're, you go from a really cushy position yeah. to, and no, no disrespect to people doing that. You got to do it. You got to do that. I was in that, that situation. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was definitely humbling and you're just like, Hey, I'm not going to just be a bump, you know, I'm going to do a what bump. I have to do. You know? <laughs> 100%. But it was funny. I would, yeah, I remember yeah. like I would be driving people and, um, they're like, Oh, like, you know, what do you do? And yeah. you're like, Oh, actually I'm financial. And they're like, <laughs> like, All okay. right. Dude, yeah. Okay, <laughs> buddy. Say so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, actually, I had a, you know, at that point I had a pretty damn good resume. <laughs> yeah. <too. laughs> like, All right, well, um, uh, so, okay, yeah. buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't fit, right? Like I'm yeah, a financial yeah. advisor, and you're like, not, like you said, it's nothing wrong with being an Uber driver. I did it myself too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I was up in LA, I did Uber driving. You know, yep. not nothing wrong with it. Yeah. It's just like in your career, you go from periods and like you, like you say, it's humbling. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's like you have this position because I if something similar happened to me. I was working at this TV station and, and I was like, you know, I was good, you know. Yeah. And then after that, going doing Uber and then like meeting, I was like literally ta- around celebrities all the time and like, you know, uh, all Hollywood and all that stuff. Right. Uh, and then going doing uber yeah, yeah. and i will tell people like oh yeah you know i have met rob schneider yeah he's cool you know he's been sitting in front of me and we talked for a little bit, like nah you yeah, did it yeah. nice story yeah nice yeah. story bro sure you know and like yeah man i promise you okay thank you for the ride <laughs> don't forget to tip <laughs> don't forget to tip man yeah yeah you want you want water yeah. or something <laughs> i'm very generous now with my uber experiences yeah so yeah I'm, me too I'm a healthy tipper <laughs> yeah me too I, I, I love i love to give them tips and 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 i always ask them like <laughs> I, I think I should stop doing this. But every time I get to an Uber, like, Uber, so how's everything doing with Uber? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I always ask him how the business is going and stuff like that. In but. fairness, it was a cool experience because um, we had just moved out here. So as far as, like, learning the city, yeah. um, I, I mean, in that regard, it was great because I actually yeah. did, you know, learn. Yeah, learn I, it, so. I didn't, uh, uh, when I was in LA, I was like, I didn't know this street yeah, yeah. you get kind of in your bubble so it's, yeah. it's good so i just like, that it does help that way and also you get to know people right and yeah yeah even though like you're like oh yeah I, I, I'm, I'm a financial advisor <laughs> right? Let's, let me help you with your money yeah you're like buddy you should help yourself first yeah. no exactly i mean it's true um but it was you know you gotta do what you gotta do and and so we we i launched it and um you know, everyone tells you, like, as you're starting out, it's like, hey, you're going to be about three years before you're making even similar money. Yeah. Um, and it was it was literally about that. And, I mean, it was it was a very interesting experience, like, constantly going to networking events, just, like I said, putting yourself out into a very vulnerable and um, different si- situations than I was used to, yeah. um, which honestly has helped, like, di- pay dividends down the road because now, I mean, very comfortable in – what we're used to usually uncomfortable settings. You know? Yeah. So it's, it, that part has been really great. Um, and it's funny, you go through those things and at this time it sucks and you're like, Oh God. And you don't realize how beneficial it's going to be. Yeah. Later. So yeah, I'm you don't, you don't see the benefit from it. And yeah, sometimes you just got to put in the work, man. And you have to get your hands dirty. Yeah. And, and yeah, I've been, I've been there. I'm still there sometimes. It's like, oh, okay, I need to grab my camera and just yeah. go and shoot and go all these things and, and overnight and things like that. Yeah. But it's, I think it's it's part of the business, you know? Yeah, no, and I know. And you'll experience I know I know because early on in your journey, but it's like a lot of times it's, I don't I didn't say, I think embarrassing is the right word, but like, you know, there's people where they're like, Oh, like what's, what's he doing? You know, now. And you're like, oh, yeah. yeah, it's stuff that you got to experiment and try it out. But yeah. then now, you know, that we've had, I've had more success on things that people are like, Oh, well, how did you do it? You know? And they think you just like fell into it. It's like, no, I, yeah. I put my, like, I was did stupid stuff that, yeah. like, you know, frankly, you're like, oh, I hope no one sees that I now. No sees that but now, it's like, yeah. you have to get go through that to get on the other side, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, especially with our generation, there's a lot of people, you get in very comfortable situations, and it's hard to get yourself out of that, but yeah. then if you just kind of stay in that comfort zone, your upside's capped. Like, they're, yeah. they're, they're very limited in what you're ended up able to do. Able to do with, yeah. Yeah, man, and it's so interesting, like, I've been doing like I have like a failed business, um, like l- like legitimate business that, that I was doing in LA and it didn't work out very good. And uh, because I had a partner and just things just didn't work out good, right? So yeah, so I've been I had sometimes like I I when I started doing this, uh, what I do now with marketing and video content and all that. I started with video content and, and stuff like that. Um, like I 
I started with like uh, an event company up in LA. They do like wedding weddings yep. and, and and all kinds of events. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like to do weddings. Like you know, I just just don't yeah, like doing. Yeah. You know, I just don't. Like, I don't you enjoy. Figure it. it out. Yeah, yeah I just don't out. enjoy doing it. Yeah. I I did it for a long time, uh, because it, it, they do pay. You know, yeah. uh, but just just don't enjoy it anymore. And like I remember a couple years ago, um, no, no, actually, I think it was it was last year or the, or the year before that, 2021. Uh, I signed a deal for a, for a wedding. I really didn't want to do it, but I kind of did it as a favor. And I remember that I was there. I couldn't send somebody to cover for me. And I was there and I was like, yeah, I think I made the right decision not to keep doing <laughs> yeah. this anymore. I, I'm not going to take this anymore. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like take this type of deals because I don't enjoy it. Like, and, um, but sometimes you just, but I needed that money you at the time. the experience. Yeah. Right. Experience, so I just yeah. like had to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes you had to drive Uber and nothing wrong with it, you know? Yeah. So Some that was, people make that was part of the process. Yeah, it's part, of, it's, it's part of the story, you know, to get to where you are yeah. right now. So so you, I can see for what you're saying that your wife has been a huge influence in your in your growth, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, how you been, how, how long you guys been together? Um, well, we started dating in 2011, um, and then we got married in 2017, so it's okay. been together a long time. A long time. Yeah, two, She's from two Boston, kids. too? Um, no, she's from New York, but New we, York. we met in Rhode Island. Probably. Okay, so, cool. All right. So, and then you guys got married here in San Diego? No, uh, we were uh, we were living in D.C. at the time, and we got married in Saratoga, New York, which is just outside of where she's from. It's, like, beautiful. Like, they got nice. the, the racetracks and stuff yeah. up there. Really nice. But, cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I got, I got, I got to meet her because she, yeah, she yeah, kind right, of acquired yeah. my services yeah. uh, a couple months ago. She's she's pretty cool. You know, yeah, she's right. very hype <laughs> and, like, super creative and yeah. likes to do all these kind of things. Cool, man. So, so let's, let's, let me ask you the question that I wanted to ask you. Like, why plumbing? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, and I, you know, joke with the team about this. It's uh-huh. like, I didn't, I, I don't, I didn't know plumbing coming into this. It was not part of my background. Um, I think for, for, and I, I tell people this, I mean, I think with business and this was kind of a benefit from the financial planning side. Um, so the, the designation I went down, it's, it's called the CFA and it's more heavy on the analytical side of like financial statement analysis. Um, and I, I actually, it's a hard exam, but I enjoyed learning all that stuff. And I, I like remember like studying, it was like stuff that I actually was like very int- interested in. Mm-hmm. And, um, you don't really use that as a financial planner. So, what happened, I had a com- uh, actually a client, she owned her own business as a consulting firm. And it was, I mean, it's very eye-opening, but she would be like, we're spending a lot of this time talking about my personal finances, but the reality is none of that matters if my business isn't profitable because that's what's kicking this over to me, right? So she then was like, can you help me more on the financial side on here so I can understand my profitability and all of that? So she honestly like unlocked a whole new business channel for me, so to speak. So I started doing more of that and actually marketing into it and kind of leaning into like an outsourced CFO type of role. Um, And I found I was good at it, but I I really, it's kind of like what you found with wedding planning. I just didn't enjoy consulting and I don't, I I just kind of started falling out of love with even financial planning. Like I, you know, it was great to be able to help clients, but I always felt like I was like kind of living vicariously through them. I was like, I don't feel like I'm building it, which like total respect for financial advisors who can do that. It just, I just, it's the same thing you said. I just was not fulfilled by it, right? Yeah. So as I kept doing that, I was like, you know, I really want to be on the other side of the table and start seeing if these strategies actually are working. Yeah. You know, because you'd give people advice. They wouldn't implement it. They'd come back, have yeah. the same problems. Right? Like, well, did you do what we did? <laughs> did no. you do yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but at that point, it's like, is I don't know. Like I and you know, sometimes you, I felt. I wouldn't say fraud's the right word, but like I hadn't done that either. So it's like, is the advice I'm giving right? I mean, I know it makes sense from the financials, but uh-huh. I don't know if the strategy is necessarily the yeah. best thing, right? Um, so I think some of it was wanting validation and proof on that. So anyways, when COVID happened, uh, just I. It was kind of that aha moment of like, hey, there's an opportunity here. There's more people who want to exit their businesses. Um, and so I was just talking to a broker. Um, and the, the, the business processes or buying processes is really interesting. So, you know, there's websites just like there is for real estate where you can literally go on and look at businesses and you sign a non-disclosure agreement and they send over the financials. So for me, I'm like, this is so cool. I'm getting oh. to look under the hood yeah. on all these different businesses. So I yeah. you know, looked at a bunch of different ones and um Funny, it's just funny how timelines work, but my wife and I had recently purchased our own home and had a bunch of issues with it, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, 
well, and I'm not kidding, like, at the time, this was my thesis. Like, millennials were totally useless when it comes to, like, <laughs> being around home and working with our hands, right? Yeah. And I'm like, so you have more millennials buying homes. Yeah. They have no clue what they're doing. They're to- totally useless. Like, they don't <laughs> yeah. not use a hammer. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. like, they're going to need tradespeople. Yeah. And literally, robots aren't replacing those jobs, right? They're yeah. instead technologies making those jobs more efficient. More so efficient. that was, like, the initial thesis. Like, it wasn't, yeah. like, everyone's like, oh, you must have, like, some investment guy, you must have, like, a crazy yeah, you know, yeah. thing. That was it, really. And then, so that was more of, like, broadly speaking, home services. And yeah. then as I got more familiar with the area, I looked at, you know, HVAC, electric, uh, plumbing. And really between those three, I was like, okay, so electric, right? You put in your lights. They, they should work after yeah. that, right? You don't typically have a bunch of issues. So I was yeah. kind of like, that seems challenging to me. You're constantly having to get new customers. You yeah. don't really have repeat people, I would think. Got I it. could be wrong. I don't know a ton about the electric business, frankly. Yeah. Um, HVAC, seasonal, very challenging, especially living here. I mean, we have yeah. a very moderate climate, so you don't have those extremes like you get in, like, Nevada, Arizona. Yeah, exactly. Even the Northeast, HVAC's great for. Yeah. Um, so plumbing was, like, kind of like, oh, well, okay, there's issues there's constantly. Leaks, um, yeah. corrosion. And um, I didn't even know some of the dynamics with San Diego, but, like, because we have a limited supply of new housing, right, there's even more benefits because a lot of that piping is just old and it's going to need to get replaced. And, yeah. you know, people are going to try to like, take care of their home. So, anyways. You I, did went deep into, like. <laughs> after the fact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, the like, fact, yeah. the initial thesis was just, like, hey, homes seem interesting and then yeah. kind of go, going, obviously, yeah, further yeah, down yeah. the road. Um, and then, so. It honestly, from like an investment criteria, I was like, okay, this is very in- intriguing. And then I was, uh, you know, kind of again, I'm, everything happens for a reason type of thing. So I talked with the broker, um, the John, who I ended up buying the company from. They were going to sell to somebody else. That deal didn't happen. So the broker sent it to me and was like, hey, you should look at this. Just so invaluable with like his knowledge and just his generosity and just yeah. like just so he's, he's awesome. Um, so, yeah, that was like the initial foray into it. Yeah. And, um, you know, came in completely green, you know, just with the team. And, and uh, they've been awesome. They you are know, very gracious and like giving yeah. me a lot of uh, room to make <laughs> mistakes and yeah. stuff. But, you know, I, I think in general, like my philosophy is just, you know, we ha- we have such a great culture. So. Um, you know, obviously I can't do everything I would want. Like, I mean, even seeing this place with like the golf simulator and the yeah. bar, like it'd be so cool to be able to do that stuff. And I think down the road, that's yeah. like a goal to aspire to. But initially it's just like, okay, take care of the team, you know, try to make sure that they know that they're heard. Um, obviously I can't implement every idea that they have, but like, you know, a lot of our best ideas come from them. So it's just yeah. being a, a resource available, um, you know, frankly, like trying to reinvest back into them. Those types of things are, yeah. are kind of what... I focused on early, and now obviously through osmosis, I know more about plumbing. You know, I'm not completely <laughs> ignorant. Ignorant about um, it. <laughs> and it's funny, like I, I, you know, so started not necessarily with like a care for plumbing, but now like I'm so proud of it. I love being yeah. in the trades and the work that the guys do and how we take care of our customers and um, the careers that we're able to create. And it's just, it's such needed work too. Like, yeah. you know, uh, there's, uh, I have a poster behind me and it's like the plumber protects the health of the nation. And it's true. Like, I mean, I, and I remember someone, um, I don't know who told me this, but the, they, they said like the difference from a first world country and a third world country is plumbing, HVAC and electrical. Right. So if you think of like, what's really separating those things and it's like, like, I think we take that for granted just because yeah. it's like we live in a, America in America, and assume it's like, yeah, everything's fine. Just, you know, hot yeah. water comes when I want it to. Right? Yeah, we don't know how to work. But it comes because our team makes it come, it right? Keeps it and that's keeps really it functional. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just something, it's a, it's like a total difference for me of being in a situation where, yeah, I was really good at it, but I wasn't fulfilled to frankly, now I'm probably not as good at it, but I'm a lot more fulfilled. (laughs) So it's very motivating for me also to consistently get better to support the team and and make sure we're moving in the right direction. Cool. That's, that's awesome, man. So, so, so you invest a lot about on your team, right? I try to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, within reason, like, you know, and I tell them that, like, we got to make sure we're also pro- like, so that was a big change to not, I don't want to say change because it's not like John was not paying attention to this, but uh-huh. a big uh, messaging that I have is like, we have to be profitable so then I can reinvest into, into the team. Guys. Like we yeah. can't like, you know, yeah, I would love to go out and buy 10 sewer cameras, yeah. but they cost $10,000. <laughs> so, you know, it's yeah, not, yeah. and you know, that's even something customers sometimes you're like, why is it so expensive? It's like, cause this equipment is it's expensive. expensive. Yeah. You know, wow. So. Yeah. That's interesting that you mentioned that. Cause I, I think that's something that I also focus a lot, I've been at least focusing a lot. It's, is the team, but building my team. Um, and I do put, I've been putting a lot back into it. 
and and I kind of say the same thing, uh, the, t- the same thing to them. It was like, you guys help me keep this machine running. I'll make sure to like bring keep like bringing the 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 clients and stuff like that, yeah. and so we can all be profitable here, you know. And I can put back into you guys, Definitely. you know. And um, I think that I mean it's kudos to you because I think for me that was a hard part even with the financial planning company because at that point it's only me, yeah, right. So you have to be the jack of all trades. You have to be wearing all of the hats, yeah. and there are frankly some hats you're not good at, right? yeah. <laughs> and so that's a nice thing of actually going through the acquisition process because you know John had already built a team yeah. in place, right? And a very good team. Nice. So to be able to come in and then take advantage of the resources that were already in place was a huge benefit because yeah. it's, it's friggin' hard when you're starting from, from scratch, scratch, right? Yeah. Um, so could, they already had a system, right? Kind of. Yeah. You, you kind of just make maybe tweaks here and there. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, the, you know, they did art, they were already had a great reputation. You know, they'd had My built a, a real good business. Yeah. You know? legit business. Um, so that was, it's, it's been interesting to have two different vantage points from starting my own from scratch yeah. to then, you know, buying into a established business. And there, um, you know, there's pros and cons to each too, of yeah. course, but the, the benefits of the team are, are, that's where I'm best, I think. And that thing even lacking when it was just me doing that. So yeah. it's for, for you to start that process. It's, it's, it's a journey, but it's, it's, a, it's cool. It's, it's been a journey. Yeah. I've been building the team since last year. Uh, mid last year, it's like when I started like bringing more people to my, to yep. work with me. And, and, I, and I gotta say it's challenging because I, some people, people that I started with, they're not anymore because it didn't work out for them or yeah. it didn't work out for me. So it's been tough, but now I, I, I think I'm on a good solid path. You know, I yeah. have a good team behind me and uh shout out to them, shout out to them, <laughs> you know, cause the editors, they're going to be editing yeah. this. So. <laughs> no. And I, I know it's like, I think financially it's hard too, right? Like, I mean, even last year, like, I, I was not even close to the highest paid employee at the yeah. company, which is, I think, a good thing. Like, I want, obviously, the yeah. guys who are selling and doing that, you know, I, I, I believe in that. But it's, you know, I think uh, assumption a lot of times is the owner is like, well, I, you know, you I make a lot. Did, yeah, I should do that, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, I think to be able to, like, my, the nice thing of not having investors, and this is like private equity and all these investors are coming into the trades and they're pouring a lot of money in there but they have people that they answer to, right? So they have returns that they have to meet. They have to probably sell the business and return that money back to their investors. Yeah. So an advantage like you and I would have, I would say is um, my timeline is more or less infinite, right? I I have no investors that I answer to. I don't have to, you know, sell in five years and bring the money back. So I can make decisions in mind that are going to benefit us 15 years from now, 10 years from now, right? Um, So I think the, the investment into the employees is a big part of that. Like we have now, it's crazy, but we have, I think, seven apprentices under the age of 25. And one of the people, one of the things people say is like, you guys have such a incredible caliber of apprentices. Yeah. And because we've invested a ton of time, energy, and money into the apprentice program, yeah. it's expensive for me. Yeah. But I now know, hey, I mean, if I can have guys like that on our team learning things the right way and they're going to build a career with me and yeah. I, they could potentially be with us for 20, 30, I mean, God, at that age, 40 yeah. years potentially, yeah. like yeah. that's invaluable, right? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a, uh, like, you, it's like that two steps or one step, or two steps forward type exactly. of thing. Yeah. So yeah, financially it can be hard, but then it is tough. Know, yeah. The benefit Cause it's been tough. It was, it's been tough for me. And even I, I have a business coach, right? So he even told me, he didn't tell me like what I'm doing is wrong. Uh, he actually told me, just like, it's just risky. He's like, like anything, right? Like anything that you do, it's just risky putting a lot into the business and to the team. Yep. And uh, like the same thing, I, I, I'm not paying myself a lot. Like, like, oh, you get it a lot. Yeah. I'm not really. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just literally paying just my rent and, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like you live that. Modestly, yeah. you live modestly, you know, uh, later on when things are like, growing bigger and stuff like that yeah maybe I yeah, can it's delayed see. gratification yeah you know, exactly so. but right now everything's again going back to 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 the to the to the business and um because i have the vision of it, right yep. i know where i want the business to go yeah, and i understand that right now it's i need to build it you need to make it solid i need to make it uh we are effective already but that's like like anything else there's areas of improvement yeah, yeah, of course and, and 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 just like see okay uh how many people do i have working right now with me supporting me do I need to bring somebody to support me on where we lacking or we train somebody like the ones that already, we, yeah. we already have to take care of that. Right. Um, because, um, uh, I, I do like three of them that are full time, you know, like so yeah. they get like full time. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, the other one, the, my, the one is my assistant. She, she's kind of 
time right cool. now um till later when yeah. we, we get more profitable but but uh but yeah so so um that's kind of like my vision is like okay i'm gonna put back into the business into the team they're comfortable they've been taken care of and the other uh, a few a couple months ago i kind of realized like oh damn okay because I'm, I'm like i was always thinking like the client building the team too but i was thinking the client take care of the client make sure the client gets what they're paying for yep. making sure to show results to the client i'm huge on that i'm still huge on that and i'm always looking for ways to kind of like uh to kind of deliver right so yep. it's like from the all nine jars like okay the creating the content but not just that creating content that works post it and besides that doesn't end there is like engagement and make sure that the client gets like leads in front of the door sure. organically at least through the social media you know like i'm always like okay this is not working let's try this and always trying to find a way but then like a couple months ago i realized like okay i need to make sure that i take care of, of the client but then i realized like oh shit, i'm also responsible for these guys yeah you gotta take care of the team <laughs> yeah and, and, and i knew it but never like kind of like realize it like like oh shit. Yeah. It's not like their life is going to be ruined if they don't work with me because they can find another job, right? But at least they, like, I'm responsible right now to for them to pay their staff, yeah, yeah. their bills, take care of their family, whatever goals and dreams they have. Like, they count yeah, in with this. That's crazy responsibility. And I was just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. <laughs> you know, I was like, ah, oh, shit, I need to better step on my game and because it's not just about exactly. the me or the business or, or my clients it's also my team like i need to make sure that they're good yeah 100%. they've been taken care of like i said it's not like they will be ruined for life if they don't work <laughs> with me because they f i'm pretty sure they'll find another job but right now yeah they i need to take care of them so i was just like shit okay no pressure oh yeah no pressure <laughs> no pressure yeah man okay cool so um so you started doing plumbing uh the business so how was the beginning stages on that like um no more on the financial aspect but more like in the on the trade aspect like the plumbing yeah. like how was that like i'm just i'm just curious that you just walked in one day and like hey guys i'm your new boss i know nothing about plumbing and how was the reaction from the team uh in like how, how how was that whole experience when they approached you maybe with some lingo that you were like i don't know what you're yeah. talking about <laughs> well I, i think it's interesting because i mean i I obviously uh, was terrified, you know, naturally, because I'm, I'm yeah. thinking like, hey, are they going to say no? Like, you know, because <laughs> yeah. the, the other kind of weird thing through the buying process, you don't really get to meet the team, okay. right? Because um, the obviously the person selling their business doesn't want to necessarily announce that they're selling because yeah. then they could create panic. Like, Chaos. well, hey, is, are things going to change? Are we going to yeah. like this new person? Like, let's just get a new job now. Yeah. While we, you know, you know, while so we can. So that's a, obviously a, a understandable fear. Yeah. Um, but it does put you in a weird position as the buyer because you're basically trusting that, hey, the financials are being supported by this team. So you're going off of the character of the seller. You know, hey, yeah. are, are the values they have, you know, more likely than not are transmitted down. Yeah. Right. So you're really judging on that stuff. Um, so that was why, um, even though it was a hard thing, it, why it, it mattered so much that I really did respect and appreciate John. Because um, yeah. I could tell like, all right, well, If those, if that's who, how he is, I would imagine he's surrounding himself with similar people, you know? Correct. Um, so anyways, it, it's, yeah, that part of it is, is weird. And I've, I've since done another acquisition, it was the same thing, just yeah. as weird, you know, it's yeah. just, uh, it's a strange process. Uh, but anyway, so the early days were, were very much your. gut wrenching you know there's a lot of those nights where you're like am i gonna come in the morning and like <laughs> nobody's gonna yeah, show the, up the ships burn out like you know that sort of thing um so thankfully like um and i think this was a big another big benefit with john coming back and and helping hopefully like um and i think this was a big another big benefit with john coming back and and helping me standpoint because he was basically able to say to the team like hey um i trust rick enough that i, I i'm doing this Um, you know, give him a fair chance type of thing. And I, I yeah. think that was all I asked for was like, hey, give me a fair chance. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I frankly, I think I even said this, like, I'm like, if, if, if in six months you're not happy with the direction things are going, at that point I failed and you have every right to leave. But like, please give me at least then. Like, you know, yeah. you're not going to figure out the business in a month. You're not going to figure out in a week. Like, give me six months. And if at that yeah. point you don't like the direction, 
by all rights. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, you know, we, we have such an awesome team. The guys are just amazing, and it, it's, it worked out from that standpoint. But, yeah, I mean, the early days, um, I mean, I, look, at the end of the day, I'm like tw- I work 24-7, period. Like, even if I'm not in the office, like, you're listening to podcasts, you're thinking about stuff, like, it's, yeah. it doesn't turn off. And, you know, I know it probably drives my does drive my wife crazy, but like you know, there's times she's talking to me and I'm literally like out Thinking on a different else. planet, right? <laughs> and she's like, "You didn't hear a word I just said, did you?" Yeah. Like, no, I'm sorry. I love you. you know? yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. But it's like it doesn't like I think, and you kind of have to be wired that way because to what you just said, like the commitment. At, you know, I think we have like almost 30 employees now. Yeah, I mean, we keep you, hiring. You guys are growing. Yeah, yeah and it's fast. like there's in order for me to get to the level I need to support them, I have to be 24. Like I got to always be on. So it's like. That I think comes with the territory, and yeah. it's not to say like oh hustle culture or anything. It's just like that's just the way it is. It's just like, the way yeah, it you know, is. You gotta yeah. you gotta be doing that. Um, so like even if I'm not in the office, like you know, because sometimes people will think oh well Rick's gone, like he must be like out on the golf. Yeah, like, it's, it's nah, true. Nah, <laughs> it's, not, it's just not. How no, it goes. no, you yeah. were doing something. You're doing yeah. a podcast. Yeah, right? and shit, even when I'm golfing, it's usually because I'm going with someone to do it, business. Exactly. Or, you know, like yeah, that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, it's yeah. So, but I mean, you get it. Um, but I think that that's like a big part of it. So. The, the difference, though, I would say, because even now where it's 24-7, that period was probably the most taxing of my life just because it was physically draining. Like, you're, it's stuff where, like, you only have so many hours in a day, yeah. but you've, you have timelines to get stuff uh, done. So you yeah. had to sign, like, credit agreements with your vendors. Like, there's, so there's paperwork you got to do, but then you're also trying to meet your team yeah. and do ride-alongs with them to get to know them, but you, like, you, it's like, well, what how, what gets prioritized? Some have to get done, some don't. Yeah. So you're on a, I, I mean, literally, it just felt like I was working all the time. All the time. And then we had a new baby at the point. So wow. it was just, it was Ooh. a lot. Yeah, it was like a lot to bite off. Um, but also, same thing. Like, I'm kind of glad we went through it because it, you know, definitely took, you know, things on our marriage where we're like, yeah. hey, if this is going to happen, you got to yeah. fix these things. You know, yeah. so that, that was helpful. And then also just like, going through that like i said the second one was a lot easier yeah and like you know that that type of thing so. So, so how do you handle all that pressure like what do you do like because that sounds because i have a daughter too right so i know how it is especially the first at least to me the first two years are like tough yeah right so um uh now she's five she's a little she goes to school so it's kind of more like yep. okay she can handle herself a little bit more, yeah. you know, she's more independent. <laughs> but yeah, so how do you handle that pressure? Because starting a new business and having a, a, a newborn is, 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 is very tough. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, because when, when I have my, when I have my daughter, I also started my, my business when I, like, when I was up in LA, like I started it then. So I, I was like, sheesh, yeah. this is, <laughs> no, yeah. this is tough. So how do you handle the pressure? Like, because obviously you've been doing a good job, um, oh, you know, I will, I will say, I appreciate yeah, you, I, I mean, you're still married <laughs> and you still have a business, <laughs> so you've been doing good it's, so far. It's working out. Yeah, so how, how, what do you do? Do you, like, take a day off and just go golfing or hiking or just, like, punching bag? Or what do you do? Uh, no, and actually, so it's, um, I think, fortunate in the sense, kind of as I was talking about with even the CFA stuff, like, where, yeah, it's a lot of work. I enjoyed it. So, like, same thing even with this. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but I, I really do enjoy the process. Like, I, I really care about our team, the relationships that we're building are awesome then being able to see guys build careers like it's it, that's the stuff that I, is really rewarding so yeah. i think that does energize me a lot okay um that being said the so the second acquisition we did was at the end of last year so uh-huh. december so very recent yeah um and that was when i could definitely tell like okay i'm i'm kind of losing control of my stress levels so yeah uh, plug here for people who haven't heard us, but I, I did the 75 hard program. Yeah. Um, that I know has kind of got a lot yeah. of attention. Mike did it too. Yeah. So Mike I got, I got yeah. him on to oh, it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so he's killing, he's on like day 30. I'm, I'm really happy yeah, for him. Yeah, um, good. and, but so I did that and I was, I was very into it and, um, that was awesome. Uh, cause I know it's like a physical thing, but honestly there's more mindset than anything. Yeah. So that was huge to start this year. Uh, got me into a really good place. Um, just like discipline, everything that I needed to kind of regain control. Because at that point, you just there were just so many things going on that you're like, man, every day is a fire, and you just feel like totally stressed yeah. out. Um, and that's not fun. Like it, it, you're not fun to be around when you're like that or anything yeah. too. So you realize like, hey, some things are outside of my control. Just got to trust that my team's going to be able to take care of things. Yeah. So it was it was helpful from delegating, you know, getting, I think, more professionalized in our, our processes and things like that. Um, so that was super helpful. Started playing hockey again. There um, you go. Honestly, so your, to your question of, like, what's your outlet? Yeah. And it was funny. I started literally the beginning of this year. Um, so I played growing up. I, you know, I, I was uh, 
always very small growing up. I was a uh-huh. late bloomer. Okay. So I think like senior, it's it's sad actually. Now that I, I, I'll, I'll be honest about the story. Yeah. So senior year of high school, I, uh, I was probably like 140 pounds, like soaking wow. wet. Like, and I, we had to do testing for football and I did uh, 135 pounds on the bench press. I think I did it like four times. It's oh. it ridiculous. Oh, like, yeah. It was sad. Um, and so I was just, I was just small, but I was competitive. Like I, like yeah. I, I liked sports. I just was, I wasn't, I don't think I'm unathletic, but I wasn't good because like I was half the size of all my buddies. So, anyways, yeah, yeah. you know, I've grown, I've I've gotten bigger. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's right now. Now like, you can do one fifty. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can do more than that. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So, um, so anyways, I started skating in it, and it's just like so fun. Like, and it's a great outlet. Do it once a week. Um, and uh, it's just even like my wife was like when I started, she's like, damn, you're like happy, like you know, so much yeah. happier. And I was like, yeah, I just I kind of needed like to your point, like what's that. Thing to just release, yeah, to, you to know? help you release the yeah. stress. Oh, that's good, man. So, so you play in college too? No, no, that's why I was like. Uh, no, no. I mean, I played like club, which was fun, but okay. it's not. Very, it wasn't serious. Do um, you fi- you follow the sport? Like you follow? Oh yeah, yeah. Hockey, like you watch the game. That's my yeah. That's my favorite. That's sport. your thing. Yeah. That's your sport. Yeah. Okay, cool. Who, who's your team? Well, Bruins. Yeah, which they set the record this year too. Oh so. yeah. I'm I've been a spoiled fan. Oh yeah, between Patriots, Bru- yeah, I've seen everyone win. So. Uh, okay, cool. Oh man, that's cool. I, I I don't know much about hockey, honestly. Yeah, we took our te- the team uh, to the goals game. Oh yeah, and it was like all of their first time. Yeah, I I thought it was pretty cool. We, they you know it was a good game. A couple, yeah, I think there was like a fight, high scoring. Oh yeah, you know, cheap beer. It's, it's always size in hockey. It checks right? a lot of the right boxes. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. All right, so you use that as an outlet. It is, it, and we need it, right? Because yeah. like. Uh, same thing with, with like like you sometimes like we just got business wise i think sometimes i take a lot on my shoulders right like and i, I want to solve every single problem and yeah it's just you just need to delegate and and, and um stress and like also personal life happens yep. so it's like you need to keep yourself composed and like okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> let me take a <laughs> let me just breathe for a little bit yeah there you go again you i know? think finding like i i now have some really close friends too who are also kind of in that same part of the life cycle and it because it, it can be hard when you don't have people who can necessarily relate because it's not yeah. like what they're doing is less it's just different right and yeah. so you're like the stress levels aren't the same like let's yeah. just be honest like it's just you know when you have that type of pressure and loans and things that you have to do yeah um so I, it's also been very helpful i think finding like more of a peer group that yeah. you can kind of like vent to, vent and like, to yeah, you know, and they um, understand what you're saying. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, it does help surround yourself with people that are in the same kind of wave because sometimes you're trying to explain it to somebody that is not and not disrespect to anybody, right? But sometimes they just don't get it. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's just like oh, I'm going through this, this, and that, and like oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, so this and that. Yeah. But yeah, so you have to kind of talk to people that relate to to that because um, it is stress, right? I guess we're going back to like the loans, you know, you had to pay the loan, yeah, yeah. whatever you had to do, had to pay your people, had to like make sure that yeah. there's mo- money in the bank. <laughs> yeah, right? That's the, that's a, kind of like this is a business, so yeah. there has to be money in the bank, you know, because yeah. if not, well, it, it's, you just set to failure and you need to plan, surround your uh, plan, you know, plan your business and stuff like that. Uh, do you have a business coach like or do you like relate to or you go to? No, but I, I do listen to, like, a lot of podcasts and just, okay. like I said, I, I don't, like, I, like I, my life is a lot different. Like, I don't watch sport. Like, yeah. yeah, I like the Bruins. I've probably watched a period of them play this year. You know, yeah. it's not like, um you know, I, college was like, you know, Sundays were for the Patriots. Like, I, you know, I don't do that anymore. I yeah. have to now, fo- like, Focus. there's two teams I care about, yeah. John Pitty and Zoom Drain. Like, there you those, go. <laughs> those are the two teams, right? So it's just yeah. different. You know, it's uh, it's stuff where, like, you know, you're reading books, you're listening to podcasts. Like, it, so I wouldn't say um, I have a coach. That's being said, I'm very fortunate. So the franchise that I bought, um, it's an amazing network, right? These are people who are very talented and experienced operators. A lot of uh-huh. them have been successful in other areas of their career and then bought into the franchise now. Cool. So on top of the peer group in that, you also have the resources of the uh, franchise itself. So um, there are a lot of resources that I have at, yeah. at my disposal. It's not like I have to you know, reinvent the wheel. Okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, um, and, and the reason I ask is because I think my, my business coach has been a huge help. And sometimes I know the answer, right? Yeah, yeah. I just kind of need to hear from somebody else, right, that, that has been through it. Because totally. sometimes I'm like, I, I know I have to do that, but sometimes I need to hear like, hey, don't forget to yeah, do boy. that. Yeah. You know, because uh, um, this, is, this is my thing. 
my brain is kind of similar to you. Like I'm always thinking. I'm always like, and I have so many ideas, man. I, but I don't have the budget for them. Yeah. <laughs> but I have so many. Well, ideas. sometimes that's a good thing too, because you can get squirreled where you're just everything's a new shiny object, right? And that can be really frustrating to your team. Yeah. So I think also sometimes the limited resources can be to our benefit because you yeah. can kind of get off track pretty fast if you pretty have that fast yeah. yeah and i i do have like tons of ideas i do have like a huge like a huge like like goals and stuff that i want to achieve and but something that i kind of like need to work on and been working on it and i've been becoming better at it. it's like being a little more patient and everything will come at the right yeah. time right and uh um so yeah so it's just that i have so many ideas all the time that i'm like okay and just need to write them down put them there somewhere that I, that i can go back to them later on when when i'm ready for that yep. but yeah right now i'm f- focusing on the business and just growing the business and uh uh making sure to deliver right uh to the clients which is, that's what i'm huge on always finding ways to 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 separate from the competition uh but yeah it, man I, i'm always thinking business i dream business bro like <laughs> dude like sometimes i i'm like sleeping and i'm just thinking like okay yeah i'm gonna do this <laughs> in my head i'm i'm here like yeah. doing numbers and stuff like that but uh, it can be very stressful sometimes you know like yeah but i also love it I, so yeah I, yeah it's, it's, i love it i, I love it too i i, I love i i think i think I, I will never go back to like working like uh oh yeah i'm i'm on un- w2 yeah point. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I I can. I don't think I will be able to. Like, That's I, even what I have a hard time because um you know we get investors who offer to buy you know parts of the company and stuff a lot of times and I just don't think I could do that. I don't think I could answer. It's funny. I saw my friend about this actually yeah. literally yesterday. Yeah, and he's in the same position. I was like, I just don't think I could answer yeah. at this point. I don't know, and that could change. You know, like I think life stages change and stuff. But I I think right now just in the building phase, it's, yeah, it's a. I think it's a very fun time of life, and I don't. Yeah, I feel the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's talking about people that want to invest in the business. So I have this big old plan for like the studio and stuff like that, and just expand and all these things. And, and I remember I was planning to do this a year and a half ago, and I have like uh, an investor, one or two investors that were like interested in it. It didn't close in anything, but the idea is there. It's there still, and it's, it's a pretty good idea, you know. But now I'm like. I think I'm just gonna do it all myself. Mm-hmm. Like even if I like lose, it's yeah. like it's fine. It's all myself. So because the same way, I don't I don't want to be like how to answer to like investors. Yeah. And, like you know, like it's it's, it's, all, it's a different approach. It's yeah. a different approach, yeah. you know. So that way, I don't have to just like report to somebody like, hey, this didn't work or yeah, like yeah. blah blah blah. So this way, it's like oh, it's all my money. I need to make sure it works. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make sure you it still works. want it to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to. Uh, it's, it, it better work, yeah. and I'll make it work uh, somehow. But yeah, man, cool, man. So, um, so you own a, a plumbing company, but you are an entrepreneur, right? So you have that mentality, uh, and, and you just happen to own a plumbing company. You love it, yeah. uh. So. So what will be your advice for somebody that's starting a business? Um, and, and then we go to the plumbing part. But if, let's say, somebody wants to start a business, what will be your first, now that you went through all the ropes and you went through all that with the financial stuff, what will be like, okay, look, you want to start a business, you need to do these three things, focus on those three things. What will those things be? Well, I'm, I'm probably biased, but I think from my background, and I've I've had some, like, sessions where I've talked with this with people who are, like, aspiring to launch a business, and I, I think you need to understand the financials and, like, unit economics of the business. So, like, okay. I've had people who have approached, like, hey, I want to start this, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, right? Yeah. And it's, like, sounds nice, but uh, actually, let me tie this into something else. I think a uh, kind of a crime that is committed from entrepreneur influencer people is, like, follow your passion and let your passion be what yeah. guy like no like if your passion <laughs> doesn't pay bills like yeah. sorry like yeah it's gotta come later right yeah, like yeah, you gotta yeah. figure out like hey is this gonna actually be a profitable thing and you're solving a problem yeah. for, like do you have a problem that you're solving for a customer and is that customer willing to pay you a you know an adequate amount for the goals that you have to yeah. do that yeah and i think i think a lot of times like um and like not to despair but i talked to someone they wanted to launch like a deli and uh-huh. i was like okay so walk through the numbers and stuff like the prices they were thinking because they hadn't actually gone through this step weren't even close like you'd been out of business in like a month like just burning cash yeah and so i think like if it's one thing to be like hey i'm a good cook or i'm you know i'm just 
I don't mean to pick on restaurants, yeah, but yeah, I know yeah, they're yeah. popular to like launch. Exactly. But yeah. like, no, that doesn't mean necessarily go start a business. So like, I do think you need to make sure like the financials are proper to do yeah. it, right? And then the other thing is like, I also, like, I know this, may not to sound arrogant, like, this is not for everybody. <laughs> it, is, it is not. Like, yeah. there's there's a really good space to be made of being, like, an entrepreneur yeah. and being, like, 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 people need great employees. And you could probably make more money and be highly valued and, um, like frankly, be able to sleep at 6 p.m. or, you know, yeah. or, or, you know I mean, not, turn it off is what I, I mean. Turn it off, like, yeah. Without having to stare at your wall or, you know, like, <laughs> so, so that's oh. another thing. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't, like, I think it's so celebrated because of like Shark Tank and like, don't get me wrong, I think they've done a lot of great stuff to like motivate Americans yeah. to get back into entrepreneurship yeah. and like the small business statistics have changed so much from like the creation of America's now. So I think that's a good overall thing to get that. Yeah. But I also think like it's so glorified and you have like, you know, for like all the influencer people acting yeah. like it's like open a business and checks just come in the mail. Like, yeah. That is not how this Maybe works. $10,000 a yeah. month and two yeah. months. I'm like, yeah. what? And that's honestly, unfortunately, I think a lot of when people are reaching out, it's like, oh, I want to do it so fast. Yeah. And that's just not how it works. Like I, you're, you and I with starting our thing, like literally if the financial company three years, like they all told me three years, that was to a T. Like I needed three years of runway. So I had savings. So I said like my wife supported us financially on her income, but like I had savings that I was using. So you needed, I needed to make sure that yeah. I had that so that we weren't going to go bankrupt, right. Or out of money. Um, cause a lot of times, like it's not the business expenses that will kill you. It's like your personal expenses because you're yep. trying to live your life. Yep. I want to be my own boss and I want a flexible schedule or something like that. And one of the things I was telling him is like, this is probably the least flexible <laughs> job you could sign up for. Like you are not your own boss. You are now responsible to your employees, yeah. your customers. Like you're, it's the total opposite of, if you think like, oh, I'm going to be my own boss because I want to go chill on a beach yeah. you know, for eight hours. You're wrong. Totally the wrong yeah. thing. And, and I think a lot of people are not um, ignorant to that, but like there are enough that I talk to that think yeah. that's the case. Like, oh, it must be great. Like you just chill all yeah. day. And they're like, nah, it's, it's some cool. people, they're not in ignorant to that, but they don't know. Like it's, it's weird to explain because they're not I ignorant. They're kind of like, oh, I know how to put on the work, but they like, do you really know? Like you had to put on the work because yeah. trust me, it, it's not easy, man. Like, and on, I, oh, sorry. And on my case, like I'm also in charge of the sales. Like yeah, just yeah, the exactly. sales itself is just a lot so of work, hard. man. Yeah. Um, and it's intimidating. You're putting yourself out there. And what's hard, I know, especially from starting from scratch, because yeah. when they say no, they're saying no to you. Yeah. Right. And, and so for me, it's uh, like, thanks, right? Man. No. And, and, right. And it's yeah, hard because yeah, yeah. you're like, you're like, that's me. That's, that's not like, I can't blame it on the product. I yeah. can't, like, they said no to me. Like, I used to get that me. with financial, the financial planning. Yeah. And it, that's, that's hard on the ego. It's right? hard on the it's, ego. Yeah. It, it, I mean, you really kind of had to kind of develop a callus on like okay exactly. i'm that's not gonna same. take it personal yeah, yeah. it's just like numbers yep. it's just they're not yeah they're not there and right it's now. gonna happen it's you gonna happen that, yeah. just i you do like i have had so many no's <laughs> that's, <laughs> but that's part of the process and i have been so close to close <laughs> the deal bro like this yeah. close yeah. and the last minute like they ch change their mind yeah. i'm like ah yeah. why you do this to me but yeah. yeah oh yeah i think i think we've all you know everyone who goes through that gets that and it's it's hard but it's part of the process um the other thing too is like related to um, that passion thing. Like, I obviously, I think it's important. Like, if I hated plumbing for some reason, like, it wouldn't work, right? But yeah. it's also to the point, like, it's not that I was, like, so passionate about plumbing that I, I wanted to get into it. Yeah. But that being said, like, you find things you love about, like, so, like, now I absolutely love it. I'm, like I said, I'm super proud of yeah. it. Like, I, I'm so glad I'm in it. But there are obviously aspects I can't stand and don't want to do. Like, I did do not as many as I would like, but I try to do ride-alongs with the team, too. Okay. And, like, yeah, there's days where, like, cleaning out crap. I'm like, that's not, like, <laughs> that's super not, fun. It's not, but yeah. it's part of the experience and everything, and it's important that you know what yeah. your team's going through so you can support them. Anyway, so I just think, like, people get really caught up in this whole, like, I have to be so passionate about it. Yeah. And that, I think, is a mistake. I think more importantly is do the unit economics make sense that you have a viable business here? Yeah. And then from there, like, there are probably going to be things that you get really excited about about that business, and then there are things that you're going to care less about. Yeah. And you're going to figure out which ones you want to focus on. Yeah, no, and realistically, uh, I think one of the biggest influence for people to have that perspective of, like, the, the shiny aspect only of being an entrepreneur is social media, right? Because Exactly. Um, 
it, let's be realistic. Some people are pretty uh, authentic there, but some people they're not. You yeah. know, uh, and so a lot of millennials. Yeah, kinda, yeah. it's, it's kind of our fault too. You know. Uh, because we only show the good stuff of things. We don't show the actual like, overnights and things like that. Yeah, yeah. When we look like, oh, fuck, I haven't slept for all, like for a whole three days. Right. I mean, just up and about, slept two hours. We don't show yeah. that. We just show when we look good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so um, social media is a great tool, right? And I tell everybody, you have to utilize it in nowadays even more, right? Mm -hmm. Like you had to be present somehow. Yeah. Uh, but also there's... For uh, and from a business perspective, like business owners or people that want to start their business, it's like there's a lot of things behind the scene the scenes that you don't see. You know, sometimes not even people there, your employees, they don't even see those things either, right? Like they don't know. Like yeah, they clock out at six and they just go to sleep and yeah, they're living their life sometimes. But like your case, you're staring at the wall, thinking like, okay, what am I gonna do now and stuff yeah. like that, right? That's actually because I was I was trying to remember what the last point I was gonna make on that is. The other thing I would say is if you're not already a top performer at what you're currently doing, uh -huh. like you just switching to being the business owner is not gonna make you a top performer. Do you, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, yeah. I, even when I like, even though I wasn't super happy with what I was doing in the financial world, like. I was dedicated to being the best. Like I would try to. Like I don't think I was necessarily the best. Like but yeah. I was. I would try it very hard to get there, and yeah. I would work extremely hard. So I was studying and doing the same things of trying to get better to a point where. You, and I think you develop confidence when that's your approach, yeah. anyways. But I do feel like I talk to a lot of people where it's like, oh, I'm just not happy with this, so I'm going to try that, and it's like. I, I just I feel for those people because I think they're gonna end up losing a lot of money in the process <laughs> yeah. like, If you're not executing and crushing it and building confidence and skills that are gonna then translate Yeah, it's not like a flip of a switch or you know and what I mean? Just like, yeah, yeah, you don't just turn it on. Yeah, exactly Sometimes you just, you just that way, you know, it's wired that way. Yeah, and you just like competitive uh, Yeah, you know in my case I I, uh, I I'll say like I think I'm very competitive yeah, I, I mean, I I said it. I have said it on. Uh, we're in the group. Yeah, yeah. The team. I have said it there. Like, yeah. Well, I'm looking to be the number one here in San yeah. Diego. You know, it's like because I really trying to be the number yeah. one. And it's bigger names out there than me. And I just look at those guys. And I'm like, Man. well, I say that to our team all the time. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm certainly not interested in showing up and being mediocre. Or like, yeah, yeah hey, we're we're an okay company. Like, no, I want to be the best. Like, I yeah. I, I literally tell the team all the time, like. If you're at a cookout and someone sees the John Padilla shirt, like I want them to come up and be like, how did you get into that company? Like, yeah. how do you work there? That's the place where the best plumbers work. Exactly. Right? That's, and that's, that's I think, what you hope for and aspire for. Yeah. But you don't aspire just by like, wishes and dreams. Like, you got to gotta. You have to put on the action. On yeah. yeah. Keep educating yourself and all this, listening to podcasts, exactly. like you say, reading books. I'm like, I'm constantly like listening to audiobooks. Uh, so I don't have much time to kind of actually sit and read a book nowadays. Uh, I do have a book next to my pillow that I'll I say that's my before bed <laughs> and I kind of like go through for a page maybe <laughs> before I fell asleep yeah. on it but uh but it's audiobooks when I'm driving listening yeah, to yeah. podcasts and like I'm in the on the marketing of uh industry so I'm always like okay what's what's catching people's yeah, yeah. attentions out there nowadays you know Super listen important. to podcasts what is this other guy doing what is even personal brands doing what is this company doing different than this company so yeah. I can implement that with my with myself and my clients and test i usually what i apply to my clients i usually test it on myself first smart yeah yeah and then like um and then i apply with them right so yeah it, it, it is you had to be wired that way like you had to be like have that mm -hmm. uh be top performance uh and and i think uh i'll say that successful business owners share like this same mentality right we, i kind of have noticed that we all kind of share that mentality like okay we gotta be the best we gotta be you know the owner of this building well if you're not like your competition's doing it so they're gonna beat you right? beat you. exactly so it's, it's like, yeah it's, that's just it's like simple. sports yeah, right it's, it's, it's like sports or yeah exactly it, you know if you're not get, getting after it like there's someone else who is and you're gonna fall behind and you're gonna have fall behind yeah, yeah it, so you have to be competitive yeah. that's that's for sure you have to be competitive in a healthy way of course yeah, right yeah. um if that is that even a thing but sometimes not it's not, <laughs> sometimes not that healthy uh but yeah okay so um so you will say, going back to that question, your your advice will be. Um, yeah, I, I pr went long and windy there. No, but no, I but think, that was great though. Of it is I like loved the, it. I yeah. think starting point is the financial piece, and I think okay. that's like not even close to where most people start. They're yeah. usually like months into planning when they actually yeah. get into budgeting, and it's like, wow, you just spent all this time and energy, and realize you don't even have a profitable idea. Yeah. Right. So, like, I I tell the team like, what is the point of business? 
And I, you know, I was excited when someone didn't say to make money because that's not the point of business. The point yeah. of business is to solve a customer's problem. Uh -huh. And yeah. then a byproduct of that is they're going to pay you. That's good. And you're going to make money on that, right? But you have to solve a problem first, yeah. right? And so the problem we're solving, right, they have a plumbing issue. Um, unfortunately, in San Diego especially, it's very expensive to solve that issue, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so they that that's what we're doing. Um, but, like, I think the first thing is that. And then the financials piece has to make sense. So like how many, you know, what's, what is the price that you're going to do? What, how many of them do you have to sell to meet the volume that yeah. you have? And you can kind of reverse engineer it. So if you want to make X amount of dollars per year, yeah. okay, well now back into, well, how many sales would you have to make? How many customers would that mean? Yeah. What do you have to charge those customers? All of those things can be answered way sooner than you get into building a logo, like creating your LLC. Like yeah. that stuff should come way further down when yeah. you already know it's worth actually pursuing. Yeah. Does that you make need, sense? Yeah. So you're saying to have the numbers first. I think so. Yeah. I just think you're putting the you know, cart before the horses. Yeah. That's a good approach. Yeah. Because a lot of people is like, oh, I have a business idea. Oh, I have the idea for the logo. And they start like thinking of that and exactly. like, okay, do you have a business plan already? Like yeah. how much do you need? That's great. And I, I think I learned that the hard way personally. Yeah. You know, um, well, I, I, I don't have like a, uh, Growing up, I didn't have like a huge like financial guidance and things like that. I, I'm always been good at uh, like selling. Kind of, yeah, yeah. kind of comes natural to me to kind of because since I'm, a, uh, I, I'm from TJ, um, so since I'm like I don't know like ten years old, I've been like selling stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mom she put me to sell <laughs> stuff. I, I used to sell candy and and I had this mentality oh, like yeah. the trade kind of right. Okay, yeah. so I had a box of candy. I remember I bought this this box of candy. Then it cost me like five five dot pesos right uh five pesos and then i saw each one of the candies uh i think it was one peso and there were like 10 of them yeah so i yeah. made double that yeah. so i was like oh this is this is Sweet. simple right yeah, yeah. so i kind of started doing that but I, I, and then after that um no, my, my my parents did a great job like they did everything to support us and everything but they also didn't have this uh financial yeah, like did what you could yeah, yeah they just did it the way they could and, and for my for my my, my mom especially was like save the money which is fine mm -hmm. but never was like okay save money but maybe just trying to invest on these things and things like that right yep. or do your numbers right uh so i kind of learned that as i was like growing up you know i lost a lot of yeah, money yeah, yeah. Uh, at one point i was like trying to flip like get cars flip them and sell them yeah so uh they didn't work out very good so it, yeah so i kind of then learned uh, the, the 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 highway but that's where I think sometimes when you surround yourself with somebody, they already went through that. Yeah. And then kind of help me like prevent those things. But you bring like, up a good point. Like there's a healthy medium, right? Because yeah. I've also talked with people who, I mean, they can do a hundred spreadsheets and overanalyze every percentage point. And it's like to jump in the water, right? <laughs> yeah, at some yeah. point, uh, at some point you got to <laughs> take the plunge. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you're not going to spreadsheet yourself to business success. So there's, I think a happy medium of like, yeah. hey, you got to know, obviously, does this thing pencil correctly? But then also just get going, you just know, start, <laughs> like, just do it. Yeah. yeah so there's, like, a, there's a balance. It's there. a balance yeah. to it. Yeah, correct. Because um, in my early and my early uh, um, uh, beginnings, I did that. I just like jumped in. Yeah. Because I'm so like, okay, sometimes like I have have the money. Okay, let me try it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen results. A friend told me to do it. Uh, so I did it. Uh, and, and, but, the results weren't there, right? So I have I have made investments. Mm -hmm. I have made several investments that were not get yeah, worth the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and I lost money. I have lost more money than I have made. Yeah. So, uh, but it's uh, to, for me, at least for my uh, for me, it's been like a learning. Yeah, it's an investment in your education. And my education, the hard way. I wish I had, yeah. somebody would be there <laughs> to tell me like. I wish I would have met you <laughs> and you tell me like, nah, no, bro, you too, you should have well, That's why I like that. to read books, right? <laughs> yeah. I'll, learn, I'll learn from someone else's exactly, mistakes. Exactly, yeah. I prefer than my own. Than my own, <laughs> yeah. So maybe I write a book later <laughs> <laughs> about my mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I've been blessed also. It's not been all bad. Like I've been blessed too with people that like know about it. Mm -hmm. So I asked them, you know, I and I also read books, you know, I also uh, try to keep myself educated. Um, it, but asking questions, man, and, and like uh, surround yourself with people that know more than you. I think it's it's, it's been huge for me. Yeah. Like uh, we're in this group, networking group. That's been huge for me. Huge influence. Yeah. For my business, uh, not all the business comes from there, but a good percentage of it comes from there. You know. Yeah. A and there's like I don't know, 
like Bob, all these people are like all 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 sharks. They know how to yeah. run a business. You, no, it's like a great example a too. You know, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think to me, I think surround yourself with people that know how to do it better yeah. than you do, and just learn from them. You know, from having their mistakes. a peer group is huge. Right? Yeah. Um, okay, so so let's before we end this, let's just talk a little bit more about uh, John Padilla Plumbing. Okay. All right. So so, what is it? Uh, that makes you different from the other companies. Is it the technology, the service, or or both, or what is? I'd say there, it's a mix because uh, you know a lot of the more professional um, plumbing organizations, like right, right, you have your professional shops, and you kind of have like the chuck in a truck call they call it called type of shop. So I think yeah. when you get to like the real organization, like we have, it's uh, the technology is pretty similar across uh-huh. companies. Um, it's an investment, so that that is something that's definitely. A differentiator from those levels but i think when you're comparing us to some of the other more well-known brands in san diego uh we're probably all using if not the same very similar technology and yeah. it's the stuff that you would expect i mean it's great for us and it's awesome for customers because it's like hey you get a text message notification that your plumber's on their way it has a picture of them a little bio yeah. so you know you, you're you know who's coming you feel more comfortable that way uh the invoicing process is easy you can just mm-hmm. send it through tech like online and everything yeah. Uh, make some back office stuff easier for us. Um, so I'd say that's a kind of an easy differentiator from just kind of like the person who's writing paper invoices yeah. and they're showing up and their truck's falling apart. Like, you yeah. know, it, it, but you kind of know, right? Hey, we're we're going to pay um, a different level. <laughs> and, you know, there are people who want to pay the cheapest option and that's what they're going for and that, that's fine. And that's fine. But I think a, a big difference really is like I was alluding to earlier in the conversation, like the apprentice program, uh-huh. the amount of training that we're putting into our team now to get to – the skill level where we feel very comfortable putting them out into yeah. customer service. Like this is, you know, arguably the most important asset that some of the people in San Diego own. Yeah. Uh, God, especially with San Diego home prices now, right? Like you got to make sure this is done the right way. And, um, you know, it's like, this is very, it's expensive work. And that's just, that's at the end of the day. Like there's a very sh- uh, high shortage of professionals available. Yeah. We have to pay them very well. Um, and, you know, if people want their neighbors to be the ones servicing them, you know, they have to be able to live here too. Yeah. So, you know, if we're going to charge a premium price and and really give our team what they deserve, in, in my opinion, like, right, a, re, which is a, a living wage here, you know, benefits, things that they can be proud of, a, a clean working van that, you know, is, is professional, all things that you would expect as an employee. Yeah. Um, you know, we, ha- we have to make sure that we're appropriately compensating them, right? Yeah. Um, that's expensive. And if you're going to have to charge those prices, you got to back it up. So, what we, how we backed it up is obviously, like I said, utilizing technology. I don't think that's necessarily the biggest differentiator, but it matters. But I think the training, you know, taking care of our, our team, making sure that the environment is really energetic, positive, right? Make, like, do people want to show up to You can tell pretty quickly, right? And um, I know I told this to the group, but it was like a really cool compliment where we had someone come to interview. And I, if guys are around, I always like them to do this. I'm like, yeah. hey, while you're here, why don't you take a walk around the shop and, and see? And um, he literally was like, I haven't seen people smiling like this and this type of energy yeah. at other places. Like, that's a big deal. And I think that Heck comes yeah. out to customers. They can tell if someone's showing up and they're happy or are they showing up to try to take advantage of you and get out of there, right? And those are different things. And I always tell a team, like, this is a business that if it's done ethically, mm. you are going to make money regardless. Like, it's, yeah. it's in, like I said, it is solving a problem. Yeah. That problem to commands a payment that, you know, is, is high relative yeah. to, you know, what you, what you have out there. So as long as you're doing things the right way and you're giving them a good experience, like, the business should take care of itself, yeah. right? Um, so those are, um, I think, the ways that we're trying to separate from our competitors. And then a huge advantage that I have is also kind of just – this is the under the hood of the industry, yeah. but I was alluding to this earlier too. Um, there's a lot of investors coming into the space Got it. and I don't have investors. It's me. So yeah. where I can start thinking 10, 15 year game plans, yeah. they're thinking three to five because they have to make a return to their investors. Yeah. And we've seen that from some of the bigger competitors who have taken on that, that money things change when that happens, right? Yeah. There's different expectations. They have to raise prices, which were already high prices. They have yep. to raise them even more because now they have to make a return back to those investors. And, you know, the, the plumbers aren't, they're not stupid. They're very smart guys. Like, yeah. they, you know, they they know what's a fair price for their time versus what's not, right? Got it. Um, and, you know, you're, 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 you're not playing in that 
game, that game of that like, game. hey, we need to get a return back. We yeah. it's just, hey, let's do things the right way. Let's train the team really well. Let's make this a good environment. Yeah. And you know, over 10, 15 years, like I have all the confidence we're going to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest one. The biggest, biggest on you. Yeah, I mean, you're already on your way there. Um, yeah, and sure. it, I tell the team too, it's not like growth for vanity's sake. Like the the growth to me, it's like you're building careers, right? If you're making it the the uh, number one choice for plumbers yeah. in San Diego, like, and you're attracting really good talent, that's the type of growth you want. Like, it's not just like, and, and you know, this is a sad reality, but we've unfortunately had, we have a very, like I said, a very competitive and strict program for our apprentices to get into a van. Like, we're not going to put someone in a van who isn't ready. Yeah. And if someone isn't able to hit the milestones that we have, we unfortunately have to let them go. We've seen people we let go, go right into a van. They, they yeah. couldn't cut it for us, yeah. and they're going right in for somewhere else, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, just because of the shortage that's in the trades, that's what's going on. So sometimes people will be like, well, why why am I paying, you know, quote, unquote, a premium yeah. for you guys? Well, Keep going. Because you're actually getting someone who knows what they're doing, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and similarly, we've had uh, a, a huge compliment is we've had guys who were in vans yeah. who realized they needed more training and actually took a step backwards to come to work for us to get that additional training because they knew they wanted to round out their skill sets. Yeah. That's like, I mean, crazy to like, you know, there's someone willingly kind of taking a step backwards just because they know it's going to benefit them in the long run. And those are the type of people that you want at your company, right? Because they're dedicated to their craft. Um, so anyways, it, you can probably tell, but it's a lot of it is the people that is making people, yeah. that, that big of a difference. Sorry, sorry, and I, I think I remember one time, because uh, I have done videos for you, and I think one of the times the recruiting videos that we did, I think you were saying this exact same thing. Yeah, and, and frankly, I haven't, yeah. I haven't, we've been spoiled. I haven't even been able to launch that video because uh, we've, uh, I th I don't want to misspeak here, but majority yeah. of our hires have been referrals in, nice. which is also really fun because the team, like, they all support each other. We're very, like, um, you know, uh, friendly in that environment of, like, hey, if someone needs help, we're going to step in to do that. And, like, yeah. we're very protective now of that culture nice. and what we're doing. So yeah, um, pretty much the hires we have right now are, based on referrals and you 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 have been building careers right that's what you were saying you build yeah you can, it's gonna i think i even remember when we were when we were making that video that you said um it's not just it's not that you're just gonna be an employee but you're also gonna build a career and it's gonna be like your own business because it's a reflection of your work or something like yeah that. i mean saying? it's really cool because i mean we have a guy who just actually literally last month we promoted him into a van and it's this is like one of the, my favorite stories because he came in completely green. So he uh -huh. was uh, the nephew of one of our plumbers, literally came to us from a uh, team event where we were having like a team picnic, uh -huh. came because he just wanted to check it out. And yeah. then ended up like enjoying the people, right? And, nice. and having fun, joined our yeah. team as a level one apprentice. <laughs> you know, he was as green as me, couldn't you know, <laughs> pick up a hammer, right? Uh, he's he's now in a van. Um, I, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe he had one of the best weeks last week in the sense of customers literally requesting him to come nice. out five-star google reviews yeah. like just it, it's like you're i i text him i was like man i'm just so happy for it like it's That's so cool great, dude. you know and yeah. he's he's not even 21 years old wow so think of that right so Jeez. he has no college debt yeah he's gonna make really good money this year wow that he deserves to make yeah because he's worked really hard like it's like amazing right and so it he has dope. that whole in, all in front of him and so, obviously, like that's that's a pretty powerful and compelling you know story to be. Able man, to tell that's right. awesome, dude! No, you're gonna keep growing, man, because you already are. Like I see your 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 trucks everywhere now. Like <laughs> when I'm driving, I even There's send you some videos. Here, yeah. yeah, I've seen you. I have sent you some videos. Like, hey, man, look, I saw your truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always like those. Yeah, it's it's crazy, um, but it's it's also fun like that. And that's the part of it where we talk. We were talking more about the stress earlier, but like, yeah, then you have those moments, and you're like, oh, they compensate everything, yeah, right? Awesome. Yeah. yeah, you know, I I love I love also hearing those things um when my clients tell me uh i have, I have a solar company they're my clients right um uh, and, and the, sometimes I, I this i think this happens to you i'm pretty sure too but sometimes i'm like thinking like oh, how can i provide like how can i give him these guys more results like how can i give them like the best service like they will get ever mm -hmm. right uh and and this guy he uh, his name's dave he 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 texts me like hey man i just I, I got i got a couple of leads through social media thank you you know they yeah, watched awesome. the video and they said like i didn't know you did you you like you also do that and then like like that's ah, cool that that yeah, yeah. they're happy that's what i that's yeah. making me so happy man because that's exactly what my job yeah, is yeah you impacted their business yeah exactly and and, and and that's such a cool thing and also or, or when my 
uh, uh, somebody that works with me, like, oh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go to a vacation to this place, and da 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 da. I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I was, good job, <laughs> man. Yeah, go take your vacation, brother. Yeah, yeah man. Oh, man, you know, it's, it's such a blast having you here, man. It's such a fun, it's such a, uh, you have no idea how much information you have provided to me. Yeah, no, no, right now it's I, social. I love talking about this stuff. So. Yeah, so it's, it's it's so insightful. You know, I have learned a lot right just by sitting with you right here in this hour. Oh, likewise. Um, yeah, you ha you know a lot about business and you know how to run a business. So, um, can you just please tell the camera, tell people how can they find you? How can they find your business? Contact you? How can reach out to you? Uh, John Padilla Plumbing. Yeah, uh, so the two companies I own are John Padilla Plumbing and Zoom Drain, uh, both in San Diego. So if you ever need plumbing help, uh, two amazing companies to support you with. Uh, easy ones are just, you know, Google is where we get most of our people. You can type it in, John Padilla Plumbing or Zoom Drain. Um, I am not super active on social media, yeah. but I guess <laughs> I would say Twitter is probably the best, and I'm just <laughs> at Rick Vaza. Okay, yeah. uh, Rick Vaza right there. So just go check them out, guys. Go see their website. They're, they're really good. Their branding is really good as well. They provide really good services. I guarantee that. This is it, guys. We're done for today. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for being my guest. Uh, go check out the podcast, guys. Go check it out. Uh, go to YouTube you can find it there with the boys podcast ring that bell so you can get notifications to see the next episode when it's coming out also go and follow us on social media Instagram TikTok all of those fun stuff you, you guys know what to do and thank you for coming out and hanging out with the boys peace out Ooh,